Welcome to another CBA Level 3 coaching session. This session builds from the welded collar tool coaching session and is standalone. As you go into the weld, uh, it must be noted there should be a gap between the two ends of the collar shown here. That gap should be in the nature of a sixteenth of an inch to three thirty seconds of an inch. Now to make that happen you need two bits of information. The first, the diameter of the bar to be collared or the ID of the, um, the collar, and secondly, the thickness of the collar material. The first thing I do is conduct a test piece with a piece of center style material, in this case, three quarters of an inch by three eighths of an inch thick. I hammer in and round it up, or I neck in and round it up, and I get a section of material that is roughly half an inch in diameter. On my test piece, I usually create two center punch marks about four or five inches apart, and then I record that distance with a set of dividers or calipers so I can find out if I get stretch or shrinkage after I've done my collar. The drawing shows that the welded collars should finish about one inch in diameter and half an inch thick. Looking at the diameter aspect of those measurements, I know that my test piece, where I've necked in, is half an inch in diameter. Therefore, my collar material must be quarter of an inch thick when finished, and that's the important bit when finished. So I add two sides of the collar, quarter inch plus quarter inch is half inch, plus the uh, neck in material, half inch, I get one inch. I've made enough sets of this tooling for the welded collar to know that they're not all equal, regardless of how careful I am. The volume of the depression and other variables can exist, and with it then, the dimensions of my starting collar stock. My collar material starts a little narrower than half an inch wide, allowing for it to expand, and a little taller than quarter inch thick. If you look at my drawing, the red is as I go into the weld. You can see it's standing tall, but it's a little narrow. The grey is my tooling, and you'll notice there's a little gap at the edges, and then the black bar is my central style. What I'm hoping to have happen is as I hit the tooling, the red will get squished, fill up my tooling, my tooling will close a little bit, and everything will marry without anything getting squished out the sides. If I did a precision fit now, just to fit my tooling, then the tooling would have nothing to push against as it makes the weld and closes the gap at the ends. In this case, I'm using a length of 3 8 square bar, but for some tooling, I'll use 3 8 round bar. Regardless of the bar, hem the sides a little to enable the material to fit all the way to the bottom of the half inch, half round bottom suede, and that's the black arrow on the right hand photograph. You can see that my bottom suede has two slots or grooves. One with relieved edges and one with sharp. I'm using the sharp edge slot. Forge the material down until it fits the width of the slot. I don't care if it stands slightly proud of the top surface of the slot at this stage. This is my test piece and I can make adjustments later. Let's talk a little on collar theory. Think of the collar material as a spring. The inside surface is akin to pushing the spring closed and the spring is trying to push your hands apart in the process. As you turn the collar the inside surface is going to get compressed just like the spring and it will want to push out the inside corners and I've marked those with the arrows. Likewise the outside surface will be like trying to pull the spring apart with the spring pulling your hands together. Same with the collar stock. It is going to pull the outside corners in as you turn the collar. So you're going to be left with a V-groove there shown in the top right of the photograph. To compensate for the deflection of the ends of the collar stock and have them meet as parallel surfaces, I need to chamfer the ends of the stock. The timing is important here. So my step one is to trim the end to about a 60 degree angle, then stop. My step two is to make a mark, at the, and a mark only, at the required length. That length is calculated by adding together the inside ID of the collar, which is the diameter of the necking end of the bar, together with the neutral axis of the bend in the collar material, which I'm going to call quarter inch. 
that gives me a real diameter of 3 quarters of an inch. If I multiply 3 quarters of an inch by 3, I arrive at 2 and a quarter inches in length. By not using pi, I am assured of a little gap between the two ends, which is desirable. So I'm going to make a mark at the 2 and a quarter inch point for my test piece. I'm going to turn the collar. If you'd have made more of a cut at the two and a quarter inch point earlier, turning that collar now is going to give you a little heartburn. So that's why we only made a mark. Wait until the collar is turned to a U shape before cutting most, and I say most, of the way through. Leave the collar hanging onto the bar for ease of control as you heat it prior to fitting. We know that the weld in this case is internal to the collar, not a simple heat and join as a normal drop tongue weld. If I do not heat the inside material prior to fitting the collar, the collar will burn before the inside material comes up to temperature. So I've got to heat the inside style. And I have the collar material heating up just to the side of the bar. When the center style is orange or better, cut the blast and pull the collar from the fire. Ring the collar off with some scrolling tongs or similar, and then fit the collar to the step of your anvil or a suitable bottom tool in your hardy hole, creating a step. Pull the center style from the fire and give it a very quick brush to remove any scale. Fit the collar around the center style. If you don't have a gap between the two ends, or if the gap is too big, remove the collar and start again. You've got no choice. Making an adjustment to the collar length later. A pair of scrolling tongs can be useful here. Note that the heat of the center style bar is ready for welding. If you have a good fit, return the bar to the fire and bring it to a welding temperature. Flux it, reheat it and weld. Ah, but before you try and make the weld, get ready at the anvil. Notice here that I have my hammer keeping the clamshell tooling open ready to receive the style and the attached collar. Any scale or other debris from previous welds has been removed from the tooling. A little drop of oil can go a long way as a release agent here. I don't care to use the brush and then with a soft hammer to prevent damage to the collar, align the bar as required. I like to work over the hardy hole to help center the collar and prevent damage. You can see here I've got my two center punch marks. I am going to check those against my dividers and see if I've got any growth or shrinkage. Typically I get 3 eighths of an inch of growth for this size of bar using this tooling. That's 3 16th per side. And as I've got two of those bars, or two of these welds, on the center style, I need to know per side. That's the end of this particular coaching session. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day. The oil if I can avoid it, but I know that I can need it if I need the help. Note the use of the lever bar to open the tooling. This is a little video, so let's have a look at this. I've got the gap to the side, close it, bang, one, two, hit it, one, two, and now I'm going to go all the way around securing my weld. I'm going to use the lever bar to open the clamshell, and there is my piece just behaving like a weld. It's all the same color. 